Hi everyone, welcome to our next episode of Conversations with the Smith Family. At the Smith Family, partnerships are an integral part of how we work. We partner with students and families, a range of supporters from across the Australian community, and of course, uh, partnering with schools and with teachers. And today I'm really excited to have two fantastic teachers uh, with me today for our next conversation, uh, two passionate and experienced educators who are recent uh, recipients of a really important award, the National Excellence in Teaching Awards for Innovation and Holistic Ways of Working. So it's my great pleasure to welcome uh, Alison Forthuba, who's the principal of Balambi uh, Public School, and Rachel Armour, who's the assistant principal at Warilla North Public School. Welcome to you both, and thanks for joining me for this uh, conversation. Now, first of all, I might start off with you, uh, Rachel. You're obviously both passionate educators. Uh, what keeps you doing this work over a number of uh, decades now? Being in education, it's just an ever-evolving, changing world, and I just love being at the forefront of that change and working with kids and um, really like-minded colleagues to really challenge kids, but also to really set them up for success as lifelong engaged citizens of the world. And, and that's what we're really aiming to achieve. It's just been such an amazing journey over the last 25 years. It, lots of things have come and gone and we've done full circles. Um, but every day is different. Every little um, cherub that comes up for a chat has something new and exciting to share. Uh, you know, coming from different schools and different backgrounds, you get to hear a whole gamut of stories and, and you get to be part of their lives. As it happened last night, you go out to dinner and you get served by previous yeah. ex-students and you think, oh my goodness, I really have made an impact. <laughs> so that's why I keep turning up every day. Hey, that's fantastic, Rachel. I love that. I love that experience of being served by a former student in that way. And that kind of yeah. reference to challenging students is terrific. Alison, how about you? You're in a similar situation. What keeps you uh, in this game? Yeah, very much around what Rachel said. I, I really, um, education for me is what I live and I breathe and I have done for 20 something years. And as Rachel said, you know, what we turn up to each and every day is always very different. So you never know what's going to happen within a day. So it's always very exciting. Um, but I guess on a deeper level, it's very much around the connections you make with those kids, but beyond that with their families, you know, and you get to know not only their mums and their dads, but their extended families and just the getting to know their stories, um, how they've come to be where they are, and then seeing the other end, the success. So, you know, we'll get kids that'll come in and, um, you know, really need a lot of support in regards to being successful at school because we do want them to come out the other end as, you know, highly functioning, you know, citizens that are doing a great job and hopefully looking after us in our old age, you know. Um, but you really get to know their families and seeing, you know, what you can do with the kids and what they get out of, you know, their time with you. It's it's amazing. I, I feel so privileged that I get paid to do what I do. Um, and I have done so, you know, across all the schools that I've worked in. Uh, the kids are the funnest part of our jobs. And I know Rachel will agree with that, getting to know them um, and all the different things that they come up with, the way that they think. And it's just absolutely thrilling and a privilege to be able to set up a school in a way that where you set your kids up for success and you can really tap into what the community needs and wants, what the kids really need and want. And seeing that unfold is like just having a magic wand. It's mm. it's it's fantastic. I, lo I love my job very much. Hey, hey, thanks, Alison. That, that, and thanks to both of you. I can uh, kind of feel the energy from your responses and I can really see why you've won this <laughs> This award, uh, particularly with your reference to working with families and having that holistic perspective mm -hmm. on education, which is just terrific. Rachel, I'm going to come back to you. You know, we can't talk about education today without talking about some of the unique challenges that we're grappling with uh, at the moment. Um, I'm wondering from your perspective, what do you think is the biggest challenge at the moment that you think we really need to focus on uh, if we're going to see really great educational outcomes? Uh, from my perspective and at Rarilla North, and I feel that um, Allison's school would be quite similar, the the cost of living at the moment is really causing us um, a huge amount of concern. We have lots of families who are doing it really, really tough. Um, so like Alison said, being able to connect with those families, getting to know them, getting to know what their needs are and being able to support them at this particular time is really crucial. We have a fairly transient population at Rarilla North and that's a lot of that's due to housing um, affordability 
and stability within our local area. So we are seeing some shifts in patterns of um, of enrolments. We're getting quite a few kids and families that traditionally would not have been um, living in our area. So it's the whole demographic is shifting. So for us, that's a little bit of a challenge because we have a broader demographic that we are, are now working with. It's lovely, but it's just challenging. Um, we're very fortunate though that we have a wind nurse as part of our school community as well. So the wind nurse is really helping to bridge those gaps and really helping to connect with our families on a different level as well. So sometimes from our perspective and from a school perspective, it's a little bit confronting for parents to deal with some of the issues and come to us. So we try to bridge those gaps by being really visible, by, by being really proactive, but then engaging those outside agencies that help to support families in, in all aspects of their life, not just in the educational area. So we're, we're finding that um, we're really trying to support in terms of providing breakfast club um, free every morning, we have laptops for every kids at every student at school, so they don't have to um, have their own device. We're trying to have excursions and events that are either free or subsidised, just so we can try and make um, equitable education opportunities for all of our kids. Yeah, no, that that that's terrific. Great to hear those insights around. Yes, absolutely, those challenges. But the, again, the more kind of comprehensive way in which you provide those supports to get to the underlying causes of why mm. people, why young people struggle with education, they're often not related to education, health that's and housing, right. as, as you've called out. That's that's great. We're, Alison, we're, just, we are their yeah. safe place. So yeah. we, we welcome families in and we, we want to help them to support them in all aspects so their kids do get the best educational opportunities. Yeah, yeah. No, fan, fantastic. Thanks, Rachel. That's great. Alison, uh, coming to, to you, thinking about uh, you and your colleagues, your your teachers. What what do um what does what do teachers need to ensure that you can support students with great educational outcomes in your work? Um, look, the the research you know clearly shows that the quality of the teacher has a direct impact on student outcomes, and so schools and Rachel schools exactly the same. We invest a lot into our teachers um, in regards to their knowledge and their skills. And, you know, within our communities, we are, we're working with um, students who come to school with high levels of complexity. So that adds another layer of skill and knowledge and understanding that our teachers are required to have. Um, so we invest a lot of time in not only knowing how to be an amazing teacher, you know, in regards to our pedagogy, but also how to understand how you work really well with kids who come from a background where they have trauma, um, disability, they are going without the basic needs that they need, you know, and how do we create that environment? And like Rachel said, it's a, our schools are safe places and we are filling the gaps, you know, for a lot of things, um, you know, in regards to brekkie clubs, opportunities, you know, those extracurricular um, opportunities that a lot of our families can't afford at the moment, we hope to provide provide to them. The digital technology, again, you know, many of our families only have, you know, a phone, you know, in, in their house. They don't have access to laptops or fancy Macs, things like that. So um, as educators, we look to really upskill, you know, and as leaders in our school, really upskill our staff to understand all those complexities, but problem solve them as well. And that's where working with the Smith family is so valuable and lots of other community partners. We're not just schools that sit on our own. We actually encompass so much around our community. And we also have a wellbeing nurse and the work because the links with health are really important for our educators to be able to do their job properly. There's a huge gap at the moment in regards to children being able to get the support they need in regards to health, you know, psychologists, paediatricians, speech, occupational therapists. Um, so having a, a wellbeing and health nurse on site here is able to fill that gap a little bit to support our educators to provide the best, you know, opportunity in teaching in the classroom. So that's a fairly broad answer to the question, no, but that right. really is big picture around what, what we require as educators and how we're working with that um, to support our families. Yeah, hey, look, thanks, Salsa. It really just shows how much of a skilled practice teaching is, uh, yeah. isn't it, in the contemporary age? And it's great that, you know, you're thinking about that uh, in terms of your practice in your school and more broadly in the, in the profession. Uh, look, thank you. That's fantastic. So, look, a final question for each of you, and uh, Rachel, just to come back to you. 
Um, what's notwithstanding the challenges um, and the great work that's underway in schools, but what what really gives you hope uh, in terms of education uh, in the future? It could be an innovation or something that you see on the ground. But what really gives you the gives you hope? I am very excited at the moment uh, on a on a new path that Rarilla North is taking in terms of being able to really start to embed some solid curriculum and to to really. Um, strengthen the kids understanding but also broaden their experiences and to really strengthen our teachers um, as Alison said before to make them experts and to make them the best they can be. We've had a number of years where well-being was our main focus and actually getting kids into classrooms was a huge challenge for Barilla North. For a number of years we just we were not able to really go where we wanted to with the curriculum because we had to really work on the foundational levels of having kids engaged safe involved in the school and we've really worked hard over five years to do that and now we're ready for that next step and it's so exciting to see that our teachers are engaged in a whole new way of um teaching there's a whole new lot of pedagogy that we're learning Alison School's part of it as well and that real explicit model of how to teach children to read how to teach children to do those foundational levels of um learning have really reignited the passion in my staff and now it's like this this term has been amazing it's a completely different feel around the school about what we're able to achieve together the kids are really confident and there's lots of different language coming out that we haven't heard before and kids are really engaged with the curriculum parents are asking what what's going on here like they want to know more and up, um, prior to COVID there was a little bit of parent involvement and then of course that all had to cease mm -hmm. and now we're seeing that re-engagement with our community wanting to come back into the school wanting to know what their kids are learning I just feel so um I just feel so hopeful for where our kids are going to go on this journey um over the next three years as a as the first starting point and just to see where we can take them because I just I really am passionate about quality teaching uh, quality education for all, equitable education for all, and this is just setting us up for a really good platform to um, to really launch into the future. I'm very excited. That's I can great. Tell by that, I can tell. <laughs> I can tell. Hey, and great to hear about the progress you've made on well-being and attendance. That we know that's a big challenge for a lot of schools, and you've got to get those foundations right because before you can get on to those other things that you've taught, you've spoken about. That's wonderful, Rachel. Thank you, um, Alison. Um, same question for you, noting, of course, what you've said about the how important community partnerships in, and we feel very lucky to work with both of you and your schools, learning clubs, and a whole range of programs. But where's the kind of source of hope and optimism for you? What really, you know, gives me a lot of drive at the moment and that source of hope is certainly around, um, I guess, a sense of awe in um, what I've seen my teaching staff be able to do with kids with the most complex needs and where some of these kids have ended up now. Um, and I think that is an amazing um, an, an amazing thing to witness and to be a part of that sort of story, you know, in regards to turning some kids' lives around and not just their individual lives, but sometimes their families. Mm -hmm. And um, so I know that there's so many high quality teachers that are so dedicated to the cause and that gives me lots of hope and that real sense of awe around what we're able to do in these schools when we work really, you know, together with our partnerships um, in a really planned way what Rachel's talking about in regards to, you know, ensuring that curriculum and well-being is balanced, that there's not too much focus on one or the other, and then we really get the magic to happen within a school. And so that's what really excites me and gets me out of bed in the morning is being able to see all of those things come together. It's like a synergy when everything's working together and then seeing those really positive results at the end. So. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Alison. Um, there really are so many factors that contribute to a great education for a young person, aren't there? It requires incredibly capable leaders to pull that together. And it's been a, a privilege to speak with each of you today and here, get some insights into that and be greatly encouraged by the terrific work that, you, that you're both doing. And congratulations uh, on uh, your awards and, uh, and thanks so much for sharing those insights today with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Doug.